Hello, guys. Hello, everyone. I hope you're doing well. Um, I think slowly people will be joining and uh, probably um, today we will have uh, less number of people because uh, it was announced three days ago, two, three days ago. So probably the message didn't reach to so many people. Uh, at the same time, like we cannot wait more because it's getting late. If people are joining, then I will be actively adding them. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, let's kickstart uh, this event. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, thank you so much uh, for being here. Uh, it's uh, it's always a pleasure uh, to speak to everybody, uh, to keep you updated about uh, what's going on. Um, and then like I will be uh, giving you all the details about uh, where we are heading towards um, and what we are doing um, and what we have done so far. So guys, uh, once again, I welcome everybody. Uh, yeah. Just a minute, please. Okay, okay, perfect. Um, okay, like uh, the first thing uh, that I wanted to speak uh, about is uh, the delay in the launch. Um, and I think it's it's pretty good thing that we actually delayed the launch. Because when uh, we were making the test, uh, we were seeing a bit of latency which was quite fine, but when we scale the whole system to a lot of users, then it won't uh, work in the same way. We did some kind of simulation study, like wherein uh, we create some kind of you know um, simulation with many users and stuff like that. There we were having some latency for sure, but we didn't have uh, so much of latency like the way we discovered it. So when we have uh, this latency, we have to create uh, parallel systems in the clouds. So we will have to add new servers and we have to channel some users on some servers so that uh, everybody gets the traits on time and it won't be having so much of delay. Of course, like maybe we cannot make it like in a split second or something, that's impossible, that's virtually impossible. But uh, initially when we started to look at this latency, it was around 20 minutes, which means if we generate uh, a signal at uh, 3 p.m., then you will be getting that signal at 3.20. So, and and the next signal is going to come at four o'clock. So you will be having only 40 minutes for the next signal to come, but that signal will be again late by 20 minutes. So it's it's a huge problem because if you have latency of 20 minutes, it's, it's, it's a lot because in 20 minutes, a lot of things can happen. Uh, maybe the signal what you received late that will not be so good anymore. The trade will not be so good anymore. So you have to get a trade on time or with very small delay. Imagine like I post some signals on uh, Twitter and you see that signal when I have posted it, um, then, then, then it will not make much difference to you. You will trade immediately and you will make profits. But imagine I have posted a signal 30 minutes ago and it's already up. So you will not be buying it, right? So the same logic applies even here also. So it cannot be having that much of latency, but anyway, we reduced it to like 10 minutes, but uh, 10 minutes also we were seeing like slightly, um, you know, like um, difference between the theoretical signal and actual signal. Uh, not, not a huge difference, but still it makes a lot of difference, especially when you are in a bear market, when every dollar counts to you. So we cannot release, um, you know, like a product which is having 10 minutes of uh, latency. So what we are working currently on is uh, having a latency of five to seven minutes because we have seen historically through the back test, through the live test, all these uh, months of uh, tests that we have done, five to seven minutes like will not make huge difference. Uh, it will be hardly like five, six dollars. So I think this is what we are focusing on. And in next 10 days, we will have that type of latency of five to seven minutes. And then we will not have any problem. So for example, if there is a signal at 3 p.m., then you will be getting a 3, 5 or 3, 7 on your account. And the difference in this five to seven minutes is not significant. So it's totally fine, even if there is like $5, $6 difference on Bitcoin. So this is what we are working on currently. And uh, we don't want to provide um, something like, which is which is detrimental to making profits for you. So that's what we kept in mind, and that's why we had to delay this launch process. So it's it's not really like we want to make the product perfect or something like no that that's not that's not the whole point at all. Um, that's how it's been interpreted, but that's not how we see it, and that's not the reason like why we postponed the launch. 
The postponing of the launch was very simple. That's uh, it's having latency. And for that one, we need to change certain things on the cloud architecture to add more servers and to integrate them. So once we integrate them and once we add new servers, again, we have to test it for some days. So it's not a huge um, testing that needs like months or weeks or something, few days, it's okay. So that's why we want to add new servers, change a bit of architecture to accommodate all these changes to happen and then test it for a few days and then we will be good. So latency will be reduced in this way. Um, and one more thing what we noticed was the charts because so far uh, we have never designed charts for this type of trading. Uh, what we are currently doing with uh, uh, strategy factory, strategy selector um, trading style. So what was happening is like before we used to have a single coin and we used to go longer short with complete money. So we were simply assuming that you will put 100% of the money. So based on that, we were showing the charts. But in strategy factory, strategy selector, it doesn't work that way. Because sometimes you, if you select a, a trading strategy, which has like only BTC and ETH, sometimes B BTC is 50% and ETH is 50%. And sometimes um, ETH is 50%. And Bitcoin is neutral, which means it doesn't have any position in uh, Bitcoin. So only 50% of the money is used. And that 50% of the money is in ETH. Other 50% of the money is just in your own account, which is not being used uh, for any trading. So we have to calculate 50% uh, of your portfolio, like how it happened and what was the impact on uh, your account. So if it makes like, for example, 2% profit, then it's not 2% profit, but it's 1% profit on the whole uh, portfolio. Uh, or like you have to calculate it like, okay, this 50% of the portfolio appreciated by 2% profit or 2% loss, how much was the impact on the entire uh, portfolio? So for that one, uh, we needed uh, certain changes on the graph. Uh, currently, the, the graph what we made uh, and what we observed during our testing uh, period, there, there were some discrepancies at times. And um, sometimes like we found like huge discrepancies. And also we had some uh, missing trades problem. So we had to fix all these things. Look, these are very practical and it's not looking for any kind of perfection or something, but these are something which we need to have mandatorily. And if we don't have these things mandatorily, then uh, nobody will appreciate that one because we cannot release a product which is half boiled um, and, and which we have not felt uh, is good enough for the release. So we have to fix the charts, we have to fix the cloud uh, infrastructure, and we have to fix uh, the latency issues. So for this one, we need like 10, 10 days, like it's like five, six days for uh, making it fine and like four days for watching it. Uh, we are working even on Saturdays and Sundays also the entire team or at least 70% of the team members. So we are still monitoring the trades, we are still seeing it, we, we are doing everything possible from our side. Um, you see, like in the summer, like only one or two employees of ours, um, they took the holidays because they didn't take even last year also. So we were forced to give them holidays. Otherwise, everybody are working always, all the time. Uh, and they're working with passion. They're working with a lot of, you know, energy, positivity. So we are doing our best to always uh, bring the, you know, like good things out so for sure, like it's not uh, because of any other reason, but we want to bring uh, something that can be usable and that we are confident about and that we are really happy to release it to the public. In the meantime, like we are also uh, watching the strategies and if there is something else like to feed to strategy factory, strategy selector, we are also doing that because this whole concept um, is pretty complex. So you need to give good strategies. You need to give like different type of strategies complementary to each other. So it's a lot of uh, feeding that takes to strategy factory, strategy selector. So if you give like a bad strategy, it will be a bad strategy itself. It will not become a good strategy. So you need to have like some simple strategies, some complex strategies. So we keep feeding a lots and lots of strategy um, uh, every week. We, we, we backtest certain type of strategies. If we are confident about that, we are pushing it to strategy factory, strategy selector to improve the efficiency of it. And we will keep doing even going forward. So launching will be um, uh, what we have announced already on 6th of September. We are very sure like by then uh, we will sort out all these issues. We'll be starting with one hour trading uh, candles, like we, which will have um, a new direction or like new trades every one hour. Then we'll be coming out with like one day trading um, because we have also observed that like um, 
higher the time frames, better the results on strategy factory strategy selector because it will have like a huge um, data between this one day because it will watch um, everything on a one second precision. So it will try to accumulate all these trades which has happened in one day time frame and which makes it to, you know, like take better decisions as and when we go. So the overall vision is to have something which is one hour, one day, one week and one month strategies so you can also have like different time frames and it will be a different hedge for you so we uh, we can we can give you a lot of choice in this way so um yeah like the, this is the reason why we had to delay the launch otherwise even we are very hungry to start business with uh, every people and to generate revenues for the company um yeah like i mean uh, like since we were developing for the past few months like we didn't have much of training activities so we are also very desperate to do that but at the same time we will not compromise on uh, the quality of the product itself at least it should be usable product at least it should be good enough one to push it to production so that everybody feels good about it but currently because of the latency because of all these issues that i just mentioned that we had to delay the process uh, I hope everybody understands that and I truly appreciate your support, uh, what um, you have been doing all this while. Um, and, uh, and, and coming to the next uh, point, uh, which is about uh, futures trading. So we will receive DASP registration next month for sure. Uh, that, that's, that's for sure. But once we receive that, then we will discuss it with uh, the regulators. If we can, uh, in our individual capacity or in my own name or like in the name of um, um, Achintia Global Holdings, uh, which is a company that holds BQ uh, brand. So with this company, can we start a subsidiary company or not? Because we are obliged to inform every single decision what we do to regulators. We cannot do anything behind them. So it's not that like we can uh, make in our own company or like a separate company which has nothing to do with Achintia Global Holdings. It doesn't matter because being a regulated company, we are obliged to make any kind of um, even personal investment that we do. Um, and even personally, if I start a new company or anything, we are supposed to disclose it. So if I, if I just like start another company with uh, Airvan or like somebody else uh, and, you know, like start the futures training there, it, it won't work like that because we need to release these things. Um, even if um, an employer or somebody else sells any kind of BQ tokens or something, we need to disclose it. So we can't do any of these kind of activities. Once again, like, like I have come to a community and I have uh, spoke about this topic several times, but some people don't get it so they keep coming out with lots of new ideas like these ideas we got it also we discussed it a lot uh, within our team and uh, we, we even like with with our lawyers and we we have spoken everything and trust me like lawyers have also better ideas than what we can think right because they are professionals they have handled several cases they have had several clients in this way they have seen it all so if if they are asking us to wait and to have a kind of negotiation process with um, the regulators, maybe there is a reason behind it, right? They can see something what we are not able to see. So once again, I'm saying like all these ideas which has been proposed, we know it already uh, to go to a different jurisdiction to make it and everything. But uh, it's not as simple as that. So yeah, as long as like we are the founders of any company, we are obliged to disclose everything. So imagine like um, almost like six years, seven years ago, uh, for, for a couple of years, I had a freelancing company also myself. So I was doing some other type of business with that one. So it was just a small freelancing company. Um, I had to disclose that company, which is completely closed, like, you know, uh, five, six years ago to AMF in the application process. And me and Erwan, we also had a bio food exporting business, like which has nothing to do with this company. Absolutely nothing. But since like it was closed uh, in uh, last five to six years, we had to disclose even that. So if they are serious about the businesses, which doesn't exist today, but we have done it in the past, then imagine if we have some new business now and not disclosing it. So we have very strict regulations. And this is the reason like why no one can rug pull, nobody can do anything in France. It's impossible because we are obliged to report everything. And um, this reporting process is very, very serious and it's very strict. Um, any, any event like we are supposed to report them in 15 days. So if we register a new company, we have to report them within 15 days. 
And we have to make a complete dossier on that one. So it's not simply one page email or something we are sending them like, hey, I started a new company. No, it doesn't work like that. We have to give complete details on what this company is, um, what this company does, uh, and will it have some kind of conflict of interest uh, with uh, B Cube or not? Or if it is having like, what is the nature of the business? It's a lot of things, guys. It's not so simple. So that's why we want to be uh, very sure about it. And if we do something without their uh, thing, then we will spoil even BQ and there'll be a huge penalty and a huge punishment by AMF. Um, the fine, the penalty may be like hundreds and thousands of euros if we do something wrong. And in the worst case, like it will end up in some kind of imprisonment and other kind of things also. If we do something behind their back without their approval, without their, you know, notice of to it. We don't want to get into these kind of uh, problems. We, we are not doing anything illegal. We should not do anything illegal. We should not do something which is against the uh, compliance also just to satisfy the needs of few people. Okay. So, but we are also committed to business like legally uh, by convincing them, by speaking to them. So um, this is definitely in the process. We have taken the decision that we will we will be going ahead with futures and options trading, but we are waiting for September month when uh, AMF will come back to the work from the holidays because whole of August, they're not doing anything. Once we convince them, once we give them all the reports on uh, why we need uh, this training and how we are going to do that, um, then we will be, you know, like going ahead by registering another company, like totally new one, like where we will be providing uh, futures trading, uh, preferably like by not targeting certain uh, people from certain countries. So this is how it's going to be. But definitely this is something like which is considered, which is there in the plan and uh, definitely something what we will be doing and what we really want to do also, very honestly speaking. Um, okay. And then um, next topic would be uh, like uh, marketing. So um, uh, marketing is like, you know, like now we have uh, very good connections. We made very good connections because of um, uh, so some of the people that we met in the recent times. Um, they're coming from DeFi background. They're coming from very good background. Um, they also have projects or they worked in very big projects. Because of that, they refer to us a lot of uh, uh, key opinion leaders or calls as they call them as. Uh, influencers both on YouTube, Twitter and other platforms also. So we are having like good list of uh, people now to push uh, you know like the products um, among their communities on on Telegram, on Twitter, on YouTube and um, any other way like where they can reach uh, to the potential users of BQ. So definitely uh, this is something like which is not so difficult now um, given the type of uh, uh, you know like connections that we have so it's going to be a smooth journey not so difficult and hard like um, before because before we we knew very few people like all the famous people and they take a lot of money but they just make you one or two videos that's it and it's finished like you don't have any relationship with them but right now we we have like a list of people like with whom we will be working for you know like one month or two months or three months like constantly having one post about bcube every two days and this is the way like how we can keep, uh, you know, like people uh, engaged and uh, people um, knowing about our platform, knowing about our product. So it's it's going to be an amazing ride in this way. So uh, we, we have made a list of people and we, we, have, uh, we have been in touch with them. And they were the people who were asking us, like, please tell us the exact date of launch. Because even they need it because they need to prepare and they need to, you know, post some nice things before the launch and after the launch. So we're just waiting for um, this one. And by end of this week, like we will be finalizing the strategy, like to, you know, like to go to influencers and to start doing the marketing uh, completely. Um, and the next uh, um, topic is uh, like, uh, we have given zero access to our Slack, the company Slack. So he's on our Slack and he can, uh, Slack Slack is a platform uh, where it, you can ch chat, like, you know, it's mostly used for companies uh, where you can discuss with teammates and to collaborate, to do um, everything that you want to do, like in a company, like uh, sharing the file or like making a presentation, everything. So Zero is having access to our Slack now. So uh, anybody wants to give any feedback directly, you can give it to him. Uh, and he will be giving that feedback directly to, you know, like the team of PQ. So completely all the developers, all the quant researchers, 
or marketing people or compliance person, everybody are there on that feedback channel, like where he has an ex exclusive access to it. So he's directly speaking to the B-Cube team. So he, now he doesn't need to escalate it to me and me to my developers. No, he directly goes to the CTO, directly goes to the developers and he speaks to them directly. So this is something like which we always wanted to do. Uh, we didn't find the right time, but we have done it now. So anybody has any kind of feedback or something directly, you know, like speak to zero and you can give it to him and he will directly give it to the team about fixing something, bugs or anything that you want. So um, um, that's it from my side. And if you have any questions, I would like to take questions from you um, or, or we can wind up. So please go ahead and ask your questions in the chat. Any questions, Benjamin, George, David, Tom, Hector? Okay, thank you, Hector. Okay, if there is no question, then uh, let me um, wind up with a closing note. Um, so guys, like, look, we, we are working very, very hard on uh, this particular, you know, like product and we have put our 100% into it. Uh, we put like our blood, sweat and tears, really. Uh, I don't know how much of uh, sleepless nights we spent, how much of efforts we put in. We are still doing it. We will keep doing that. Uh, as long as it's possible or like uh, forever, even uh, if it takes to make a wonderful product. So we are completely committed in making this happen. Uh, as I'm always updating you, every single stuff that's going on, um, that, that's, that's the best I can do to keep you informed about everything because I want you to know uh, what's going on really because uh, this is something that is missing in this industry, right? So that's not the way how YCBQ. So that's why we will inform you everything, every single what's what's going on in the company and every kind of things. Even I'm, I'm trying my best to reach out to more number of people because we are also looking for investments from venture capital. So I'm just moving from one place to another one. Uh, next, next month, I'm going to United States uh, to Permissionless 2023 conference. So there I'm looking for venture capitals, angel investors to invest in the company. Um, and then like more partnerships and more number of people to reach out to them, uh, to get more and more uh, people like who will use our platform. So this has been my core focus to find investors for the company and find uh, clients and find users of BQ products. So these two are my primary uh, focus right now. And for that reason, like I'm going to United States next month and I will be in uh, Turkey for the Binance Blockchain Week in November. And I'm also seeing like certain good events like which is happening in October where I can get either the users or the investors. So I'm, I'm, I'm totally busy. I'm going everywhere as much as possible, um, making a lot of uh, online events and everything. Uh, so far, like what we uh, did on LinkedIn, for example, it brought us a lot of users. So that is something which has been proven that channel like where a lot of users and conversions are happening. That's why I will I will do more and more on LinkedIn, uh, making webinars for people like very intuitive, uh, very um, uh, engaging kind of um, uh, webinars like which people like. So this is where like my focus is on now, like to bring in new people to our ecosystem. So it's not just growth on the Telegram channel is everything for uh, uh, for the ecosystem as a whole. But uh, we are also seeing like how many people are actually signing up on the platform because that, that's what really matters. So signing up on the platforms, 
Um, and how many people will really use the product. So that, that's what matters also. That's one of the key KPIs we look at. So increasing the number on Telegram or something, it's great. It's amazing. It looks very good. Um, but but that's not everything, you know, because if if you have like 20,000 people on your Telegram, but hardly 200 people are using your product, so which means 1% of the people who are actually on Telegram are really using your product, that doesn't make sense. At the same time, um, big number is always appreciated, so which, which always gives some good confidence to people. Totally agree with that. So I will also uh, try to see uh, how we can sort out that issue also. Everything has been done. Um, so currently, my focus is on uh, like speaking to venture investors. Uh, and that's what I'm speaking to a lot of venture capital investors. It's pretty hard uh, in this market to raise money because of, um, uh, you know, like a lot of scams that's happening, uh, which happened last year and also happening even now, like some rug pulls and hacks and all these things. And also Web3 is not uh, really very hot now because semiconductors is the hot topic currently. So, and also we are in the bear market. So in bull market, anybody and everybody will give you money, but in bear market, it's very difficult. But um, we we have filed for a patent. We have a lot of things. So we really have something, you know, like we are not asking money for nothing. So that's why I still um, keep looking for it and keep, you know, I'm, I'm going ahead, like I'm doing everything possible uh, to make it happen. So we still have like eight to nine months of money in the bank account. So that should be fine. Um, because even Tesla, you know, like if you see it, like they just raise the money uh, in uh, the Christmas time, like when they were just running out of money. So the, in, in startups, like all these things are possible. These are entirely possible. Uh, but like we will keep doing, you know, like finding new people, explaining, making presentations, but at the same time, getting more users and creating revenues for the company. That is also equally important uh, to create revenues and to live on your own money, not just looking at venture capital investors. That's that's completely um, um my way of seeing at it uh, but like because you know like last year was the worst year uh, especially when uh, we were not able to give futures trading to certain kind of people in certain jurisdictions it all started off with germany italy uh, spain and like everybody uk uh, france everybody stopped and then we were like stopped from the amf also in providing uh, services to french citizens and then came the FTX problem, the Celsius, Luna, many things happened. And like a lot of people lost money there and they didn't have money to put in money with us. And at the beginning of like uh, swing trading, but it was doing very good, but people didn't have the money. They had like very small amount of money. A um, lot of things happened, uh, but like we keep going, we keep going. We, we, will, we will never say, you know, like we can't, but we will, we will, we will do that um yeah guys that's it like from my side and we will keep going and we will release the product this time on 6th of september um we will we will make a very good product so after that like we will make many other things for the company to grow like with a lot of partnerships and everything so that's all uh, we can do and that's everything i will do it what is in my hand to make big cube as successful as possible that's it guys that's it from my side um i can see um something um, okay, so there is a question from George about uh, the bear market. Um, yeah, we are, we are still in the bear market. And to be honest, um, I'm not expecting any anything uh, bullish in this year completely. So this complete year will be bearish. And even going forward, like we might see big dumps on uh, Bitcoin because a dump on Bitcoin Bitcoin has already started, in my opinion, because I've been bearish uh, ever since the beginning of this year. Um, we we had like a little bit of bull run for sure, like from 15, 16,000 to almost like 31,000. But that's it. Uh, I don't see any miracle happening from the current levels. We will fall down slowly. So 20,000 or like even below levels. There are a lot of issues in the market. There are a lot of problems in the market. Uh, we are seeing the problems coming one by one. Like we, it it all started off with uh, the scams that happened. And there are like lots of effect because of this kind of scams, um, which is not being discounted yet. And also there are a lot of problems with uh, exchanges. Um, you know, you never know about these exchanges, like what they did or what they are doing. And also they have violated some laws in the past. Uh, by neglecting certain regulations. So all these things will come back haunting. They won't leave you alone so easily. So I I, I still I, I still feel that like 20,000 or below on Bitcoin is absolutely possible. So this year will be bearish. 
it will be completely bearish even going forward. I don't see any bull market starting or something in uh, the nearest future. But there will be some interesting altcoins which will stay strong and they will go forward from here. And uh, if you see like Litecoin uh, halving, which happened like a couple of months ago, all uh, other uh, Litecoin halvings previously um, made, you know, like altcoin to rally by several X. But this time we didn't see uh, Litecoin, you know, like rallying anything at all. So slowly, like this uh, whole process of uh, rallies and everything that we used to have before is uh, changing. The definition of rally is changing before the, um, you know, like before the so-called halving process. So having said that, I am also feeling that um, Bitcoin halving will not be that kind of big event uh, in the next year. I know a lot of money is coming from um, uh, Fidelity and all the big trade fi companies, uh, the traditional finance companies. Uh, but it's a good good news and a bad news at the same time. The good news is because um, the adoption is happening. So a lot of people are accepting it. The bad news is because the volatility will go away. So you cannot expect those kind of returns what we have seen back in 2015 to 2020. So we have to forget those kind of returns. Because uh, every time between a bear cycle and a bull cycle, we used to see 10x, 15x, 20x. But now we are seeing hardly like last time. We saw 20,000 to almost like 60, uh, like uh, 9,000. So it was just a 3.5x. So this will slowly, slowly, slowly reduce as we go forward. Uh, it, when big money is coming, it doesn't mean like there is a big moment going to happen. And if everybody is coming, it's it doesn't mean like everybody is going to, you know, like push the Bitcoin prices so much up. Definitely not. So the volatility is reducing. And I still feel that like this um, bearish markets will um, will will be there will be there until next year, and we can see like bull market only in 2024-25. Until that, we cannot see any uh, bull market. This year it will be a huge dump market, and from there we will see some stability. And next year onwards, it will slowly progress. So I I still feel that like um, there is bear market, and there will be bear market for some more time. Uh, don't don't be under the impression uh, that we we will be in uh, bullish markets just by seeing some small moments in the market because these kind of moments we always see and they are deceptive in nature um, by by seeing various equities and other kind of asset classes so far um, I can I can feel that pattern is pretty much the same even in cryptos also currently so this is what I feel and I always love to be uh, wrong at least in this one because of my own bags also. But let's see what will happen. Um, um, okay. Uh, thank you, Hector, for that. Uh, thank you, George. Good. So perfect, guys. Then um, um, we will be uploading to uh, YouTube a little later because Imre is on sick leaves. He had a broken leg. So we are, but still he's trying his best, but I don't want to uh, trouble him now for making uh, it on YouTube, but I will be sharing this video itself on the Telegram so that people can watch it if they have like 30 minutes, because it was not a big uh, uh, time, um, uh, you know, like uh, like one hour or something like that, 30 minutes for uh, their own investment in a project. It's it's good time to spend in a weekend. And I hope like this was not boring also. So it will be good for them to watch. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks for your time and uh, thanks for everything. Uh, I will assure you, like, we will come out with a very good uh, product, which everybody loves and which everybody likes to have. And lots of big adoption is going to happen with these products. Thank you so much, guys. Have a nice weekend and take care of yourself. Bye-bye.